So when we understand the soil as a, as a biological realm, we understand the importance of living roots year round in the system. When we understand that living roots give up anywhere between 20 and 70% of their photosynthate into the soil, we understand that this is a soil that really needs to be fed. When we contrast the range of roots that live in the soil, we can see that there's an enormous difference between the slender roots of a grass plant and the great bulbous root of this tillage radish. The grass plant has got an enormously fibrous root system with a huge surface area. In contrast, this guy has a relatively small surface area but has great punching potential. So we use plants like tillage radish to break subsurface compaction, to get down into hostile subsoils, and in so doing, not only do they loosen some of these dense soils, they're also accessing nutrients that may otherwise leach through the system, such as nitrates and sulfates. So a principal aim of regenerative agriculture is to increase the amount of soil carbon that we've got. And when we look at a system like this, this is a, this is a, a pasture that was grazed off and was partially cultivated in. And we can see there's a huge amount of material underneath the surface of the soil that's available for, for uh, microbial degradation. Some of this uh, more resistant type of material re will require fungi to break down, and this is the old crown of probably a chicory plant. Uh, most of the grasses have already disappeared because that food is so immediately available to bacteria. But it's all carbon in different forms, taking part in different cycles, some fast, some slow. It's exactly what the soil needs to, uh, to apportion food to the millions and billions of microorganisms that are living in here. So on one level we've got carbon going into the soil through, uh, through uh, old roots and shoots, but where does the carbon originally come from? Well it comes from the atmosphere, carbon dioxide. So plants are this miracle machine that's able to take oxygen from the carbon dioxide and combine that into carbohydrate, which is the building block of all life on earth. And it's the carbon in the carbohydrate that ends up in the soil and that fuels soil biological processes. The area immediately around the root system of the plant is called the rhizosphere. And this is an area of most intense biological activity because this is where the food that's being produced by the plant and, and uh, exuded out into the soil, this is where it is being delivered. And of course, this is where the uh, bacterial and fungal and all other populations are going to accumulate. So we can see the wonderful nodulation on this plant and right in the middle of it here we've got this worm and why is he stuck in the middle here? He's not chasing nitrogen from the nodules, he's after all the, uh, the, the goodies in the form of bacteria and fungi that are growing in very close association with this root system. Now one of the features of this vegetable farm is they're growing a lot of leafy crops with quite short uh, growing periods. So there's a, a really rapid turnover in, uh, in crops. So we're talking 8-12 weeks. The crops are cut off, roots are left in the ground. A key feature of their management here is having living roots year round. Having living roots year round means that our carbon cycle is being constantly stimulated to turn over uh, all forms of different carbon, so leaves that fall on the ground, more resistant roots that are in the ground. So the various uh, forms of carbon are all cycling over and releasing nutrients and feeding the next crop. So here we are in this really big and beautiful broccoli patch here. Now broccoli are regarded as uh, 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 very heavy feeders and it's no surprise that a considerable application of compost was laid down to support the uh, energy demands of these crops. But one of the lovely things to see here when we start digging into the compost we'll see that it's matted with surface roots. So the roots of the, com of the broccoli are straight into this compost and are extracting all of the goodness and energy from this compost that the plants are needing to grow and to remain healthy. The surface part of the soil here where the compost is. Now this compost hasn't been dug in, this compost has just been laid on top as a surface mulch. But of course the compost is highly aerated, well matured, 
a lot of uh, nutrient in this compost and that's exactly where these roots are going to, uh, to find their food. And you can see the density of roots that are growing through this compost, really, really fine. These are the feeder roots. These are the ones that are chasing nutrient. And there's certainly no shortage of nutrient as evidenced by the fantastic growth of these broccoli.